We're going to show today an analysis of a CryptoWall 2.0 malware variant, a type of ransomware, using VMRay's hypervisor-based dynamic analysis. This video is part one, showing an overview. In part two, we'll drill down in greater detail. We start by submitting the sample through the web user interface. Samples can also be submitted in bulk as archives or via the API. VMRay automatically identifies the sample as a 32-bit PE or portable executable format, but this can be overridden. VMRay shows the available target machines to which the sample will be submitted. We can change the defaults and select or deselect any of the available target machines. We'll now take a deeper look at an analysis that was done on a Windows 10 target machine. In the overview section of the report, we see a high-level summary of the static file information. Scrolling down, we see the screenshots taken during execution, and then a process graph showing which processes were started or injected and which ones need to be monitored. Finally, we see all the created and modified files. These can be downloaded for further analysis. The static section gives you info on all the PE, or portable executable format, files associated with the malware, as well as additional information like import, export, and the entropy of the file in question. One of the most valuable pieces of information is in the behavioral section of the report. The map and table shows the network information displaying all the hosts that were contacted during malware execution, including IP addresses and usually geolocation information as well. Scrolling down, we see one section per monitored process. If we expand a section, we see more meta information. From here, we can also download the process dump and drop files. We can also see the operations by process grouped by category. Expanding these, we can see what has been written, deleted, and created, and what drivers were installed, and more. The next section of the report, Behavioral, presents the same information, but this time presented in chronological order. This is useful for getting a better understanding of the semantics of the malware as it executes. In the Statistics tab, we can see a lot of runtime information about the malware. For example, what kinds of categories of API functions, what kinds of functions were executed, and what the CPU consumption was per process. Very often, from here, you can identify frequently occurring threads that are needed by the malware for communicating with command and control servers, for example, or threads that check the registry for existence of certain keys. Finally, we come to the Severity tab in the report. VMRE includes a dynamic database of malicious behavior patterns. The analysis is scored against these kinds of behaviors, and from there, a total severity score is calculated. For example, in this case, some private API has been used, and some Windows services used for security have been disabled. These behaviors and others score this malware as highly malicious. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for part two, where we do a deeper dive into the analysis of this crypto wall variant.